Hey, buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about centrifugal force, and let's do an example problem. Now before we get too far along, uh, let's make sure we're all thinking about this the same way. I, I got a little example here, let's do that. I took, this is a T-handled wrench here, and I hung a little string, here, let me get rid of this. Um, yeah. There we go. Hung a little string off it with a uh, socket, okay, a little, little mass there. So if I hold this like this, hold the wrench vertical like this, and I start spinning it, this wrench, this uh, socket, ought to start uh, swinging out like that, right, because of centrifugal force. So let's see if I have been practicing this. Let's see if I can get this thing spinning. Here we go. So there we go. I've got it spinning more or less evenly. A constant rate. Now if I spin it faster, that angle with the vertical gets bigger, right? And my chances of hitting myself in the face go up. And let's see if I can slow it down. There we go. And this, when I slow it down, the angle of the string makes with the vertical gets smaller. So speed it up and slow it down. Oops. Now let me try that again. Slow it down. There we go. All right. So I think we know what this is. Let's go ahead and run a problem on the board, and now let's scale it up a little bit. Let's imagine that the system that we're working with is a little bit bigger, okay? So let's start with, make sure I can get you right there, okay? Um, let's say we've got a shaft here, and it's spinning. All right, now, spinning at what rate? We need to know what the rate is. Well, let's make the rate two radians per second, and this has to be in radians per second, okay? Now, what's a radian per second mean? Let's, well, there's two pi radians in a circle. So if this was two pi, 6.28, that would be one rev per second. Well, that's pretty fast for what we're trying to, to talk about here. So I'm gonna make the rate uh, rotation two radians per second. And, wow, that's terrible, I can do better. Hang on. Okay, so we've got two radians per second there. Now, let's say also that this bar has an arm that sticks out. And it sticks out one meter, and I'm gonna call that, I need a variable for that, so I'm gonna call that D. And there's a weight hanging off a string. Okay, and I'm gonna make that length, well here, hang on, I'm gonna do it another way here. And I'm going to make that length L. Okay, and that's also going to be one meter. Let me get my head out of your way. There we go. So we know what this looks like now. Last thing we want to know is what's theta? Okay, so we're given all this, find theta. So that's the point of the problem. We're trying to figure out what theta is. Well, how do you do this? If you've watched my videos before, you'll notice that there's a recipe, you may have noticed, there's a recipe for solving all problems like this, and it has five steps. Step one, working diagram, that's this. Step two is a free body diagram, which we're about to draw. Step three, we're gonna write out the equations of equilibrium. In this case, it'll be dynamic equilibrium. Step four, we're gonna solve for something. And step five, optional, we are gonna enjoy baked goods because we got the problem right. All right, so let's, let's do this. So this is step one. Step two, let's draw the free body diagram of the weight, okay? And this is, we'll just call this mass M. Turns out it doesn't matter what that mass is, it'll cancel out. Oh, that's not a very good weight. Okay, let's just look at the forces acting on this. Well, there's tension from the cable, or the string. We're assuming that's light compared to the weight of the mass, so the, of the mass down here. So we're ignoring the weight of the string. We've got the weight there, and that's mg. All right, there's one more here. Now, the way I, t I solve problems and the way we teach our engineering technology students at here at Purdue to do it is to use something called inertial force. If the weight is accelerating towards the center, you know, towards the axis of rotation here, and it has to be because it's moving in a circle, that acceleration is V squared over R, MA acts like a force. It has the units of force, it acts like a force. Now is it 
Philosophically, probably no. But if we treat it as something that we call an inertial force, it can go right on the free body diagram right there. So the inertial force is MA. So there's the free body diagram. Well, you know, if I'm going to sum the forces in the x and y direction, wouldn't it be great if the forces were actually in the x and y direction? Let's fix that. So I'm going to remove that. This is now going to be T cosine theta. That's, that's T in the y direction. And this is going to be T sine theta. That's T in the x direction. All right, so now I'm in business. I've got all my forces in the x and y. Well, I will. Hang on a second. I don't have positive sign convention. Ooh, there it is. Okay, now I know where the x and y direction are. So got that. Um, one more problem here, though. What's, what's going on there? What's with ma? Well, let's see. I know that's mv squared over r, because that's the expression for centrifugal acceleration. And v is r omega, right? So m r squared omega squared over r. Oops, let me make that r uh, capital here. Alrighty. So I've got mv squared over r is m r squared omega squared over r. Well, I can clean that up a little bit. That's just going to be r omega squared. Okay. And that's the expression for centrifugal acceleration in terms of omega, which we know. So we are good to go here. Well, let's see. Let's start writing out some equations of uh, dynamic equilibrium. Let's do some of the forces in the x direction. How far down can I go here? That far. OK. And that's going to be, if I can remove this. OK, that's better. Well, let's see. I've got minus t sine theta. Okay, that's this expression right here, okay? And that's pointing to the left. Well, that's opposite my sign convention, so that's a minus. Whoops, I missed the M there, guys. Ooh. Oh, that's better. And that all has to be zero, right? Some of the forces in the horizontal direction has to be zero, including the inertial force. When you include inertial forces, statics and dynamics look like the same thing, guys. So this is good. Now let's do the sum of the forces in the y direction. Let's see, t cosine theta, that's up, and so that that's, uh, goes along with our positive sign convention there, minus mg. And that, uh, let's see, well, I'm sorry, I went from capital R to little r. Let me fix that, because just to be consistent with what I wrote before. There, that looks like that. Now, the, the problem I've got right now is I don't know what r is. Well, I kind of do. That's r. Here, I'm going to get rid of that. Well, there's r. Well, do I have a better expression for r? Well, it looks to me like it's d plus l sine theta. All right. The nice part about this, theta is now showing up here as a variable. I don't know what r is, but if I write r in terms of that, now my equations of dynamic equilibrium have only the, the variables in it uh, I care about. So let me rewrite this. So that's m d plus l sine theta omega squared equals 0. Oh boy, look at that. Now, how am I going to solve this? This is step uh, 3. Working diagram, free body diagram, equations of equilibrium. We can even number those if we want. Step 3. Step four is to solve this. I'm going to have to kind of do this down here because I'm running out of space on my board. 
I've got two equations and two unknowns. My equations are some of the forces in the x direction and some of the forces in the y direction. The two variables are t and theta. Everything else in that equation I know. Do I care what t is? Problem doesn't ask for it. I can calculate it if I want to, but it doesn't much matter. So let's do it this way. Let's solve this for t and this for t. Whatever is equal, if uh, the two expressions are equal to t, they must be equal to each other. So let's do that. I think that's as far down as I can go and you guys will still see it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to erase over here and we're going to go ahead and solve this. Okay, so far so good. There's not much we can do to clean this up. This is a highly nonlinear problem. What I can do, I guess, if I want to, I can multiply through by sine. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I guess. Oh, by the way, the masses cancel out, don't they? That's handy. Told you it didn't matter what the mass was. So let's see. I'm going to get d plus L sine theta. All right, so the expression now, d plus L sine theta, that whole thing times omega squared, equals g tangent theta. Where did the tangent come from? Well, sine, if I multiply it through, I get sine over cosine, sine over cosine is tangent, and there we go. All right, so there's no good way to solve this that I can think of. Well, no, there really isn't. We're trying to solve for theta, right? This is, th th you're just gonna have to do this one numerically. So plug this into your favorite software. I did it in MathCAD. You can do this on your calculator if you have a TI-84, TI-89, Inspire, one of those. You can plug this into your calculator and ask it to find the solution for, for you as well. If you wanna find using a root function on a calculator, all you gotta do is subtract G from both, uh, subtract this from both sides and you can write it out that way if you want. This turns it into root finding. So if you want to do it that way, that works too. Now, however you decide to find to uh, solve for this, what we're going to do, uh, what we get at the end of it is 30, make sure I get this right, 31.942 degrees. Now, when you solve this on your calculator or software, whatever, it may come out in radians. So don't be too surprised if it, the first number you get doesn't look like this. Remember, radians is the only natural unit of angle. I did a video on that. If you're gonna work in anything but radians, you're doing a units conversion. So if this comes out in radians and you have to turn it in degrees, don't be too surprised. So anyway, here you go. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.